It is my honor now to present to you the final speaker for tonight's event. Um, we just saw a great lecture on task and team motion planning, um, and now we're going to move into the region of belief space planning. How um, can autonomous systems perceive the world around them, and how can they choose and make decisions to navigate within them? Um, so, uh, Vadim, he uh, completed his undergraduate degrees here in both computer science and in aerospace engineering. Uh, interesting combination, like uh, if you throw a computer, he can tell you how far it'll fly, so I guess that's cute. Um, and then, of course, he uh, went on to do his graduate studies here in aerospace engineering. Uh, he went to work at uh, Raphael for a few years, uh, working in algorithmics and navigation. Uh, he did his postdoc at uh, Georgia Tech. Um, and ever since 2014, he's been a professor here, and he founded the Autonomous Navigation and uh, Perception Lab, ANPL. Uh, So the pointer works. Yeah. Thanks for the introduction, and um, I'm excited to be here today. And uh, thank you very much for the organization of this event. I think it's a very important initiative. I truly hope that you will continue this uh, down the road. So uh, today I'm going to describe uh, um, some of our research in the lab, uh, starting from general descriptions of you know what we are, what we care about. And then going forward with a specific direction that I'm very much excited about that calls for simplification perspective of online planning approaches. So generally, talking about um, autonomy, uh, we care to ask about different questions. And the first one we care about us is perception and inference, meaning where is the agent located and what is the environment that surrounds the agent. And this question, this what is the environment surrounded, surrounding the agent, can be asked at different levels. One level can be purely geometric. So we imagine a camera that is moving in the environment, observes some landmarks. So we can ask ourselves what is the 3D position of each of the landmarks observed in the camera. Similarly, we can um, present the environment using uh, occupancy grid, discretize the 3D world into voxels, and ask, for example, whether each voxel is occupied, is it an obstacle or not an obstacle? Uh, and we want to answer this question given data measurements from our onboard sensors. However, we can also ask these questions on a semantic level, higher level understanding in the environment. So meaning, what is inside of this box? Is it a chair? Is it a car? Is it an elephant? So this calls for classification approaches, and you can imagine them an object viewed from different viewpoints along the track of the, of the agent can be seen differently visually. On top of that, we may want to ask another question. How do we do planning while accounting for different sources of uncertainty, given this very partial and, and noisy information? We want to be able to determine what should I be doing next as an agent. And uh, apparently there's a very tight connection between these two guys, the, the two problems are connected, and the solution of each of these problems is applicable to many, many problems in practice. Um, so here are some illustrations just to, to, you know, to, to show you around. So, for example, tones navigation, active simultaneous localization mapping, informative planning, informative sensing, robotic surgery, um, you know, tones navigation over Mars, and, and much more. So let us be a bit more precise here. So, um, so I'll introduce these notations that we're going to use along the slides. Um, so we will denote by x the state. This, this x here is the state that we care to estimate. We assume a setting that the state is unknown, partially observable, so we need to maintain a distribution over the state. So here's the probability distribution of the state. The state can be continuous, discrete, or a mix of both. And this distribution here is conditioned on some actions that the platform performs, Thomas car, camera, and so on, and on the observations that the agent receives from its sensors, such as cameras, LiDAR sensors, and so on. So we want to maintain this distribution. This is the inference and perception task, and we can we present this distribution in different ways. We can present it in parametric ways. For example, we can assume it is a Gaussian distribution. 
We can also present it in, in a less uh, restrictive way, assuming that some non-parametric distribution given, for example, by a set of samples. In any case, we can take our given problem, for example, take this camera that explores the environment and present it using graphical models as such, where each node here corresponds to a certain variable that we care to estimate. Okay. So in, in, the, in this slide, we're going to use B for, for belief or posterior distribution over the state. Okay, this is the belief. And now the planning objective uh, that we want to consider, basically, this is not a course, uh, not a lecture in math, so don't be worried. It's just conceptual things for now, so don't be scared about this math. But for now, let us imagine that we want to define this objective or value function, if you will, that at time k, we want to reason about L steps into the future, okay? And we want to define some function R, the reward function, that is a function of future beliefs at the future, right? So this future belief here is the future distribution over the state, given data that we already have, and given data that we foresee that we will accept in the future, okay? So for example, these are future observations that we consider, some realization that we consider in the future, right? So if you imagine a camera, then you may imagine uh, what will be the image or features that we observe if we do some specific action in the future. Now, this reward function can be of different things. It's quite flexible approach or formulation. It can be, for example, this is the goal to address tasks such as you want to navigate to the goal can be also some information theoretic reward uh, to address tasks such as we want to explore the environment, if we want to reduce uncertainty, and by that increase our accuracy in the estimation. So we can now combine the two things and look at this online framework where we have, um, where we have this inference that process that updates the belief with incoming measurements. The belief is an input to the model that does planning. The planning model outputs the optimal action or the policy that will be executed. The agent executes the action, gets new measurements, updates the belief, and the process goes on like that online. So here in this illustration, you see an example of this, uh, of this process uh, done in the lab. Uh, where two quads collaborate between each other, online, real-time. Uh, you can see here um, the quads are equipped with cameras and LiDAR, um, LiDAR sensors, and they um, recover, they estimate the 3D um, occupancy grid of the environment. The environment is unknown. And at the same time, they localize themselves using only onboard sensors. No GPS, no optical, no optic track, and so on. Okay, and we can also see how the uncertainty evolves uh, along the robot track. We can see, we can collaborate between the robots by exchanging information, um, different factors or raw measurements and so on. And so this is an illustration of this online framework. Now, going back to the conceptual things though, if you look at the original problem that you want to solve, this planning problem, uh, regardless if you're going to use action sequences or policies, well, solving this is actually computationally intractable because we need to construct this tree, which is called the belief tree, where we need to reason about all the possible actions, and for each action, we need to reason about all the possible observations that we may accomplish. Right? So, clearly intractable to solve, theoretically at least. And still, we want really to be able to operate autonomously online. We want to be able to operate online also when the, there is some aliasing in the environment, for example, different objects that look alike. We want to be able to acquire high-level semantic understanding of the environment, as I mentioned before. We want to understand that we're looking now at a chair and at a table and so on. And we want to support these belief-dependent rewards, meaning we want to be able to reduce uncertainty um, actively. So in the time that I have left now, I'm going to describe a specific direction that addresses 
mainly the first few bullets here, uh, mainly addresses the computational complexity of these things. And the direction calls for simplification. We want to consider simplification of these decision-making problems. So here's the concept. So the idea is the following. We want to identify some simpler problem that is easier computationally to solve than the original problem that, as mentioned before, is computationally challenging. And at the same time, we want to provide performance guarantees with respect to the previous problem. The question, of course, how do we measure simplification uh, quality? How do we know that it is a good thing to do or a bad thing to do? Yes. But this is the concept. We want to identify a simple problem and then provide performance guarantees. So this concept uh, started in the lab about eight years ago um, with the following key observation. So if we want to make decisions, we can sort actions from best to worst. So you can look at this graph. The x-axis are the actions. So this is, you know, we have here 30 possible actions, and we want to choose the best one. This is decision-making. And all we care about here is to sort actions. We don't really care about the y-axis at all. Meaning, if we can find some simpler problem that preserves this track, that preserves the action ordering, we are guaranteed to have the same optimal action in both cases. So we, we call such a simplification as action consistent simplification. So if we can find such a simplification, and in addition to that, it is computationally easier than the original problem, then it's a win situation, of course. Naturally, this is not possible in many, many cases. So in practice, there will be some, you know, some gap between the performance of the, that we can achieve with the previous original problem and the simplified problem that we consider. And so to, go, to get guarantees, we want to understand how much do we sacrifice by going to, the, to this simpler problem. So let's see an example. Um, for the example, sorry. So in the lab, we kind of... Um, investigate this direction for quite a few years, and uh, over, over these years we um, came up with different simplifications um, with performance guarantees that I will uh, kind of highlight now. One of them is going to be with Gaussian beliefs over a high-dimensional state space. Another one is going to be non-parametric beliefs represented by a set of samples. And the last one will be over hybrid or mixture beliefs um, presented by, let's say, hypothesis, and we'll talk about this. So here's uh, the first work um, that basically says the following thing. Let's assume, again, we have this camera that you can see here in the right top here. Travels in the environment, maps, features, landmarks, and so on. And we assume that we have a Gaussian distribution for now over the state. The state is high dimensional because it corresponds to all the landmarks that we saw and the entire trajectory of the camera. So this is a high dimensional setting and we consider this belief to be Gaussian in this case for now. So we have a Gaussian belief with some uh, mean vector and the inverse of the covariance matrix which is called information matrix. And the concept is that, well, why don't we take this information matrix, here it is, and simplify it by throwing away information. So we are going to sparsify this information matrix, so we are going to you know, throw away some elements. Sparsify, right? And the question, of course, is do we get the same decisions? And if not, how bad is it? Because obviously, if we are going to sparsify this matrix, Calculation, many calculations be become more efficient. For example, if you want to calculate the determinant of a matrix, it is much more easier to do when the matrix is sparser. Right? The question is, what do we lose? So here's an example of, uh, of, uh, of, you know, of a very realistic simulation, gazebo simulation in this case, where we demonstrate this concept and we have many, many details in the paper. Uh, so what you see here is the following. We have an agent that does SLAM, simultaneous localization, map, localization mapping, using, in this case, only LiDAR data. So blue color here corresponds to the map 
to the map that the agent constructed using LiDAR data. These are different possible trajectories to go from one location to another, where the reward here is the entropy, meaning we want to get to, get to some location with minimal uncertainty. Okay? And what you see here is the original um, square root information matrix, as a matter of information matrix, but the factorization of it into, you know, into square root. And we consider here two possible uh, specifications, simplifications, if you will. Right? So one is just uh, sparsify a bit, and the other one sparsify you know, completely, just, you know, just leave it there alone. Okay? And what you see here is the way the value function behaves for different actions, and these two different specifications. So for the first one, it coincides with the original value function, with the original, sorry, with the original matrix, and we can prove this is uh, guaranteed to coincide, meaning this is an action consistent simplification, guaranteed to have the same action. But as you can see, in terms of performance, much, much less. The green one corresponds to this diagonal specification, which is by far cheaper to calculate, obviously. And see here empirically, empirically, that the same overall is preserved. And in the paper, we provide bounds that can be used to provide guarantees on that one. So this is an example for simplification. In this case, Gaussian belief, and we want to sparsify uh, the matrices here. Another uh, instantiation of this problem that we investigated recently uh, is uh, concerns with um, belief explaining with non-parametric beliefs, where the belief is represented by a set of samples. And this is work done by Ori and also by Andre that sit here in the crowd. Uh, so the idea is that we have here a set of samples that correspond to a belief at a certain time, and we want to do planning, and by that we want to reason about how that belief evolves into the future, right? And so you can see here two possible trajectories where the, how the, you know, the set, the cloud of particles evolve into the future. Okay. And the simplification in this case corresponds to taking this original sampling-based presentation of the belief, let's say with n samples, and utilize only a subset of these samples within planning. And the important part is that we want to of course, if we do this, things will be cheaper, but we want to provide guarantees to say what might we lose, and can we get a situation where we get the same performance, but cheaper. And so to do that, um, to do that, we developed, Ori developed bounds on entropy. Ori, where are you here? Ori, this is the guy. And um, bounds that are cheaper to calculate than the original reward function, than this guy. And these bounds can be now used in a branch and bound uh, kind of uh, um, a technique where we construct a belief tree. And for each belief in the belief tree, we calculate a simplified belief and use it to construct the bounds that I mentioned before. And if at some point the bounds do not overlap, then we can say that, let's say, if you want to choose between this branch and this branch, if the bounds do not overlap, we can safely you know, prune away one of the branches and just leave the other one without calculating the expensive reward because the bounds are cheaper to calculate. Um, okay, so we are very excited about this work and uh, Andre now continues this to more advanced settings. You are welcome to talk with him later if you want after the lecture. Another work that is uh, complementary to this work is, um, is to look into uh, clustering approaches where we take a bunch of observations and cluster them together such that we evaluate the reward function, the bound of the reward function only once on the level of expectation. Um, forget the details, you can look at the paper, but the, the, but the bottom line is that we have bounds on that one is also, and you can see here uh, in illustration how much time it can save you guys, right? So this is, you know, uh, this is how much you can save in terms of speed up while guaranteed to have the same, exactly the same performance. Lastly, I want to mention another work uh, that uh, was done by uh, Moshe, Moshe Scheinman, and presented recently at ICRA a few 
few weeks ago. And in this work, we take this, per this simplification perspective to a bit different setting, where we consider the environment to be extremely alias, meaning imagine that we have a world full of bicycles, and we cannot distinguish which of the bicycles am I looking at now. So for example, I had just two bicycles. Am I looking at the left bicycle or the right bicycle? Right? So in other words, we do not assume that that association um, is solved. Right? So we maintain here um, basically a mixture belief uh, where components correspond to different associations, or different hypotheses regarding that association because we cannot reliably understand do we see the left object or the right object. Right? We can imagine, for example, uh, different corridors that look alike and the classification aspects and so on. So we have basically to maintain hypotheses here about possible associations and the number of hypotheses grows exponentially with time here in this setting. Exponentially time. Clearly, if you have limited budget constraints on the platform, for example, a quadrature, cannot allow to do these things. So the idea in the simplification here is to only utilize a subset of those hypotheses, but at the same time provide guarantees with respect to the entire original problem. Okay? So um, I will not get into details too much. You can read the paper, but let's just uh, take this a small example. Let's assume we have two hypotheses in the beginning, and these are this is kind of imaginary world full of obstacles. Oh, sorry, of landmarks where these are identical landmarks. These are identical landmarks, and only one disambiguating landmark located here. And let's assume that we only have access to a single. Uh, you know, we can, we can decide if we choose one component or the other because we have some constraints on the computational burden and so on. So with this approach, we can basically guarantee that um, if we utilize, uh, let's say, component number two, the bounds basically can be used to identify that this is indeed the best action to take without any other assumptions. But again, if you want to, you know, you should read the paper for details. All right, so, uh, so hopefully um, that was uh, okay for you guys. So we consider it uh, an online simplified business planning with performance guarantees. Uh, the concept was to identify <coughs> and solve a simpler formulation of the business planning problem. And importantly, to provide guarantees that can be deterministic. And uh, I didn't mention that, but those guarantees can be also stochastic. And the concept basically gives us the ability to reduce the computational burden, or in other words, to do speed up with limited or no uh, loss in performance. Uh, so we are very much excited about this concept, and we have some other directions in the lab, on the lab website. Welcome to see it. Thanks.